Hey everyone, welcome to uh, Science Corner. My name is Justin White with Imagination Station Science and History Museum. Today we're going to be exploring rocketry um, using physics and we're going to be doing a pretty cool experiment that you can see as part of our phenomenal physics program. Now to start off with, in order to actually get up into space, we have to understand physics because one of the most daunting tasks as far as space exploration, um, especially in the 1950s and when uh, John F. Kennedy de declared that we will make it to the moon, is how in the world do we get up there? So first of all, we need to understand the background of physics. Uh, one of the greatest physicists uh, to ever live uh, was Sir Isaac Newton, um, in which not only did he make the, uh, the theory of gravity, but he also created Newton's three laws of motion, um, in which we're going to be exploring here today. The first law of motion, which is basically can be broken down into three points. First of all, an object in motion tends to stay in motion like our soccer ball here. Now that is theoretical because of course our soccer ball will eventually come into contact with something that will stop it. Second part of that law is that an object at rest will tend to stay at rest. So our soccer ball obviously isn't going to go anywhere unless and a force is acted upon it. So if I were to hit the ball, it would actually start to move. Just like whenever that ball is in motion, something is going to end up coming into contact with it, which will then slow it down or stop the ball entirely. Now the second law is uh, actually um, kind of like a math equation, um, which is force is equal to the mass times acceleration. So your force that you're applying to an object is going to be equal to the mass and the speed in which you're trying to move that object. Uh, take for example, a person pulling a child on a, in a wagon. Uh, that child's mass and as well as the speed that that person desires to go is going to be affected by the force that is being exerted by the person pulling the uh, the wagon. Now the third one uh, is going to be, uh, third law is the one that applies mostly to our rocket that we're going to be doing today, which is that for every action there is an equal or opposite reaction. Um, and that's what we're going to see today with our water jug rocket booster. Now you'll notice that we're using today a, just a typical water jug. Um, it's a thick plastic one uh, that way so whenever we get to our experiment it's not going to explode or anything like that, at least we hope not. Uh, so one of the things that you'll notice is that our jug is actually facing the opposite way of your typical rocket booster. Now if you were actually trying to go into space, you'd be flipped upside down to where your nozzle will be facing the ground to give you enough force to get off the ground. Now we're going to be using um, a mystery liquid, which I'm not going to tell you just because this I don't want you guys to be able to do this at home and hurt yourself. Um, and we're also going to be using matches as well as our jug. So the first thing I want to do, um, especially with any scientific experiment where you are actually run the risk of hurting yourself, you want to make sure you have gloves on, um, especially fireproof gloves. Um, and then also I do have eye protection on as well. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our rocket fuel, which is one of the two things you're going to need uh, besides to add to your booster, um, and we're going to put in about 15 uh, milliliters of rocket fuel. All right, so now that we got our rocket fuel into our graduated cylinder, we'll go ahead and close that up and put it off to the side. And then we're going to simply just add the rocket fuel to our rocket booster. Now the next thing we need after you have your fuel is you have to have some way to actually create that force to get up off the ground. So in this case, we're going to use matches as our ignition. So we're going to pull out, pull out a match. And one of the important things with experiment two is to let the, uh, we want to let our rocket fuel sit in there for a second just so we can uh, accumulate the fumes that are coming up off of that liquid um, because it's going to be the gas that is primarily going to ign help ignite. And so we're going to light our match in one, two, three. And there you can see that once we added our match to our liquid, uh, it actually creates a pretty cool explosion on the inside of our tub. Um, what basically happens is that gas comes into contact with that match, sets off our explosion, and that reaction has, has to go somewhere. So it's going to go through what we call the path of least resistance, which is our nozzle, which is wide open. So that's why you see that the flames and everything else came outwards. So just like in a uh, actual rocket, uh, launch, you're going to see that force come out of the nozzle 
onto the ground and that nozzle is going to create enough force to get the rocket off the ground and then upwards towards space. Now of course NASA has much more powerful uh, equipment than we do, uh, but in a nutshell that's pretty much the same theory. Thank you guys for joining us on this epi episode of Science Corner. I hope to see you guys around at the museum. Again, my name is Justin White with Imagination Station Science and History Museum.